What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today we're going to talk about the expedition, which is a way to pick up sweet loot and a ton of experience tomes. <laughs> yes, please sign me up. If you like getting sweet loot, you should totally like and subscribe. We're going to try to get you uh, lots of guides for picking up awesome stuff. And we are sponsored by the makers of Rise of Civilizations. So what is the expedition? I'm sure many of you have figured this out already, but it is a series of challenges that get harder and harder as you go along. In my experience, the factor that makes the biggest difference as to whether or not you can beat higher tiers of this event is whether or not you have enough troops. With that said, the right strategy can go a long way, and we'll illustrate that in just a minute. Before we do, it's worth just talking about this shop for a second. The shop contains a number of things that are very significant. Every week, there's an epic commander that will rotate, and you can purchase as many of those sculptures as you want on any given day. I generally would not advise purchasing these. I think there's other places you can get them, but if it's a commander you're working on, you certainly could do that. Now, this is the only place in the game where you can pick up sculptures for Constance, and I would highly recommend doing some number of these to max out her gathering skill. Now, this third sculpture, which is always here, is not actually purchasable yet, and it looks like it's legendary, so I'm holding on to my currency specifically to pick this up. There's also six items that rotate down below. And I only spend my currency on the stars, the legendary stars and the epic stars. Everything else I just let sit. And I suppose if a legendary shows up, I'll pick it up. I think I've seen like a legendary commander sculpture once and I didn't buy it. And I feel real silly about that. Of course, as with many of the stores in the game, there's a little button you can use to refresh the store. Uh, one of those, the first time you do it, is free. So, of course, always go and do that. Now, let's talk about strategy. There's really a few strategies that are relevant when you're approaching the expedition, and it depends on the layout of the enemies. It depends on the layout of the enemies. What I like to do is to fight a small number of enemies at a time and have all of my armies hitting them at once, and then move over to another group of enemies where I can. But some of these challenges have only a single boss. For instance, the final challenge, level 70, is a Julius Caesar. There's only one boss we have to fight. Now, the good news for you is that rage tanking is exceptionally strong against a single target. <laughs> it is what I would recommend as a strategy. So we're going to set up commander groups here, and I'm going to show you the types of groups that I put together, uh, which will give you some tips into things you might do as well. So the first thing I like to do is I tap the preview button to see where exactly I will be assigning these troops. And it looks like there's only four areas where I can assign troops, which is kind of funny. So we'll see what that's actually like. I'm going to go in and first make my rage tanking group. In this case, it's going to be Lohar with Richard the First. And we're going to max that out with infantry, in this case, Samurai. Next up, we're going to make a DPS unit with Minamoto and Cao Cao, bringing all cavalry to the party. Now, here's where things get kind of interesting, and you got to work with the commanders you have. We're going to use Boudicca with Joan of Arc as a rage, restoration, and buffing unit. We've got the expertise skill unlocked for both of these commanders, so they should be able to do work on that front. Uh, Boudicca is rocking a skill tree build with a ton of rage restoration. So it is kind of like a rage tanking build, but not exactly, but close. I need to actually hit ready. So this time we'll hit the right button instead of canceling. Bada boom. I'll, I'll mention, though, the reason I'm filling with siege units instead of crossbowmen is that I'm going to make an army with archers in just a second. That army is going to be with our good friend Kusunoki. And backing him up, I'm going to choose Tomo. Both of those commanders focus on archers, and this is a full archer unit, so I'm feeling good about that. Now, I don't see where I can put my final army slot, so I'm going to hit the back button, and maybe I can get a fifth army, maybe I can't. This is where I'm personally kind of using my leftovers. Uh, I'm going to use CPO, and I'm going to pair him with 
uh, Cleopatra. I've got the first skill maxed on Cleopatra. She is an interesting commander to talk about in this context because she can do an AoE defense boost and an AoE heal, hitting every single unit uh, that's on the field, which is pretty strong. I will add them in. We'll see if they show up somewhere on the map. Let's see. When we preview. Mm, all right. Well, this is going to be interesting. So our strategy against a single unit is to understand whether or not they have AoE. And Hannibal Barca is doing direct damage to a single target. So I don't see area of effect damage here. So we can just swarm this Kai and hope for the best. And that's a lot of tier 5 troops. So this is going to get dicey, I suspect. Now, worth calling attention to the fact that you can see the buffs in the upper left. And if I was really serious about smashing this right now, uh, I would also travel around the map to pick up a rune that was very, very strong for this situation. So troop health, troop attack, troop defense. One of those would be really, really good in this context. With that said, we're going to hit start. We're going to give this thing a try. And we're going to try to get these commanders to all connect at the same time. We want, obviously, our tank unit to hit first so that they're absorbing the damage. But then from there, we will hopefully all engage roughly the same time. And let's see if I do this. Can I have him attack? I have no clue where he's marching from. Huh. Hiding in the bushes. Okay. So this is one of the more straightforward fights because it's a single unit and we're basically swarming it. And you can see he's doing some pretty massive damage to my tanking unit. That's incredible. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of damage go on to Lohar. Not even the hard difficulty of Karak Ceremony was this punishing. Wow. Wow. That is incredible. Do I think we will win? Probably not. Maybe we need some more tech. Maybe we go got to pick up a rune on the map. Level up our commanders a little bit more. That's incredible to me. We're doing a lot of debuffs. It's worth mentioning. I think it's like 30% attack reduction from Richard the First, 25% attack reduction from Boudica. We've also got a 40% attack reduction from Cao Cao. And look at look at that. Everybody's just getting super punished here. That is incredible. The other thing we might try out, and maybe we'll we'll do it is to use, jeez, we could use um, Richard I and Charles Martel. And I don't have their talent set up correctly to do that, but we'll just give it a shot after this just to see if it's any better. <laughs> wow. It's possible we can win, but I don't know that we're going to three-star it, certainly. And let's see. Does Hannibal Barca have a heal? I think his heal is only when he's attacking a player city. So this is just raw T5 brute strength doing work on us right now. <laughs> All right. I don't, think, I don't think we can win this. So we're going to back out, quit the current mission. We'll go back in. And we're going to try one other combination. We're going to say, okay, what if we're not rage tanking? What if we just see if we can make as tanky a unit as possible? And then we go over here. Since we have Lohar, we'll use him to crank out the heals from Cleopatra. Well, conceivable. And we'll give this one more try, and then we'll wrap up this video. It says it's neck and neck. Maybe I'm supposed to be able to beat this. All right, we're going to get our troops into position. I see where those guys are hiding now. And I'm... Okay, good thought for a second maybe I got too close. We're going to go in. All the troops are going in. Let's see if the maxed shield effect from Charles Martel helps me stay alive longer. The damage here is just so bananas. <laughs> the other thing I could take a look at to amplify my effectiveness in this context would be using something like an army expansion to make it so that the tank army and really all these armies would have a whole heck of a lot more staying power. I'm not too worried about beating this tier at this point in time in my development, and I probably will try to beat it at some point in the future when I'm doing maybe some PvP and I pop an army expansion and I use the leftover time on it to complete this. 
I don't think that the two legendaries paired together is doing that much better. And that's probably because I don't have the talents set up on Richard the First to really handle the situation. Wow. This Lohar unit's just got melted. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So, level 70 is really hard on Expedition. Three starred all the other stuff up to it really easily, but that's a tough one. You know, one other thing that maybe we ought to cover since it's currently the holidays is this O Tenenbaum tree. And there's really one thing we got to talk about with it, which is that there's an extra tier, and I've already purchased it. It's 7,000 gems that gets you better rewards for leveling up the tree. I would recommend that you get it. You get a ton of gems throughout the course of completing this particular event. So it pretty much pays for itself. I think you get something like 5,000 or 5,500 gems through the course of the event. And uh, if you need gems for this extra tier of rewards, I would consider getting the 30-day gem supply, which will give you 2,200 gems on the spot, and I think immediately a token for 650 gems, and then a token for 650 gems every day. The amount of value you get from doing this tree is totally insane. To do the tree, you collect ornaments, and there's a bunch of places you can get those ornaments. Um, the Places that you would be looking are sort of the places you might expect. Collecting on the map, collecting in a city, and defeating barbarians. If you need a guide on how to collect insane amounts of resources or make production in your city totally bananas, I'll have a link either in the description or a card in the top. And this is an event in which you should definitely be popping the production boost tokens that you have that increase the amount of production in your city. So my friends, I hope this video was helpful. I'm really enjoying smashing my way through the expedition, and I've got only this one mission left, which really is sort of a strength check. Do you have the damage output or not? I think we've got the strategy about right. And if you've got any thoughts or comments on how to smash that expedition, let me know down below. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.